Now one of the things that you're likely to do with your SQL 2008 and SQL 2008 R2 DVDs is to slipstream them. So you know what a slipstream is, right? This is when you take the original DVD that you bought from Microsoft or the original ISO image that you downloaded from MSDN and then you apply the patches directly to that image so that when you install SQL Server 2008 or you install SQL Server 2008 R2 it's already updated okay so this is definitely something you want to do if you're going to be worried about I need to be able to reinstall SQL Server very fast okay so I'm gonna walk you through the steps it's fairly convoluted uh, there are a lot of steps and I have a few ancillary files that go along with this video that are attached with this video that are go you're gonna to need to walk through them with me to understand exactly what they mean do and how they help okay so let's get started here what I've got I have a SQL Server DVD okay so when I take a look at that it's your standard DVD now I can't write to the DVD I can't write to my ISO file so my first step is going to be to copy to a hard drive okay so I'm just gonna go zoop, right click copy and place them somewhere on a hard drive right so that's going to be step one. Don't worry, um, you don't have to write these down as I go through them because I've got a document that we're going to step through. I'm just kind of walking you through it right now. Now, I have this done already. I have a folder called SQL 2K8 R2 SP1. So what I want to do in this video is I want to slipstream, one word, no spaces, slipstream Service Pack 1 into my SQL Server 2008 R2 media so that I can have a DVD that when I install it already installs Service Pack 1 for SQL 2008 R2. Okay, so I've already done this hard part. Okay, now that's step one. Okay, now step two, you have to go download the Service Pack files. This works for cumulative update files as well, but in the interest of speed, I'm just choosing Service Pack 1. So I have downloaded the three main architectures, right? You've got your uh, x86, x64, and IA64. Okay. So go download those and get these. Now you may not realize it when you look at them, but these are self-extracting archive files. So what we now need to do is extract these to a folder. Now, you can't really right-click on them and say extract. It won't do that. But you can actually address them from the command line and use the slash X. So we could actually just go to that and say uh, slash X, oops, sorry, and it will extract. That's what that's going to do. Okay, We can tell it to extract. Okay. Now, I have built a, so step one, by the way, you see how this says step three right here okay step one copy your DVD to a folder step two download all the service pack files okay. step three extract them okay. and here's what we're gonna do I like to use batch files so that I don't goof it up so here's what we do let's just take a look at what ours is I'm going to put all of these in a single folder called SP1 so yes, I'm extracting all three of them to the same folder. They will be they were there will be a set of shared files, and then there will be an x86, x64, i64 folder within this. Okay? Now this is going in the same location that I had copied my DVD to. Okay? Now I like to use little variables here so that if I need to change it, I don't have to copy and paste. Okay? Do what you want. Okay? So notice that in my folder where, the, where I copied my DVD, there is no SP1 folder. So let's go back over here, run this, step three. It's extracting it. Okay. You can see it's coming from X64. Now I didn't have it turn off the notification that one is complete. I like to know, this doesn't take long, um, but you, I'm sure you could probably set this into quiet mode, uh, but I like it prompting me, I like it telling me this is not something that I do so often that I need every single piece automated. So we'll let it do that. Uh, when we're finished here, oh, it's almost done. Then we can go back. We told it to put it in a folder called SP1. 
sure enough there it is with the three architectures in it. Okay. Now you see in this SP1 folder that we have another setup.exe. Step four, again don't write all this down, I've got the steps delineated, we'll, I'll show you. I'm going to copy it okay. and I'm going to replace the original setup from the DVD with this new bootstrap. So here we say paste and copy and replace. Now step five, we're almost done here. Right, there's only two more steps here. Step number five is to then refresh. You see how at the root of the original RTM image there already is an IA64, X64, and X60, X86 folder. We need to replace the files and folders in these folders with the SP1 versions. Okay? So that's what we have to go do. Okay? So I'm going to go tell it now to do that. So if we take a look for example at the x64 you can see all these files so here's what we do. Go back over here got another batch file I'm going to use RoboCopy uh, this is built into your Windows 2008, Windows 2008 R2 OS and I'm gonna tell it to copy here's my base folder that's where we copy the DVD okay? and here's the patch folder we extracted all of our patches to that so we want to go to the patch folder, to the x86 folder, and we want to copy all of those files to the base folder x86. And yes, we want to overwrite those silently, but we want to exclude a file. Notice this particular DLL. Okay, we're going to exclude that file in all of these. Okay. So we're just going to repeat this for each architecture. We're basically overwriting the files that were on the DVD with the files that are in the patches. So let's go ahead and run that. It won't take it too long. Right here. Uh, that actually was too fast. What did I... Um, I've messed something up. Just trying to see where I've potentially messed up here. Uh, it should have taken longer than that. <laughs> um, let me see. Let's, let me diagnose here. What I will do when I get into stuck uh, situations like this, I'll drop down to the command line and I'm hitting shift and tab and that cycles through all of the folders and files. So I'm gonna go ahead and run it and I'll see what it says. It says I'm doing something uh, wrong here. Uh, let's see. Where's the error. So skipped one directory, skipped 84 here. Uh, 84, okay. Well, it's going faster than I, I thought it was. I thought I thought it was going to take it actually a little bit longer uh, to do that. Uh, we can now verify. Uh, well, one thing we have to do, step six. I have to go down into the actual, these folders right here. I need to tell these folders that your new source is in here. So I go down here and I, oops, sorry. Um, I need to go into each of these. So I64, I go to this file called defaultsetup.ini. And in here you'll see some basic INI stuff. So here's the key for SQL Server 2008. Here's the product ID. And it's going to embed your product ID right here. You can leave that or you can remove it. If I take this out then it prompts me to do evaluation edition. Okay. But I need to change this to say PCU source all capital letters equal no spaces open your double quotes dot because that says root slash SP1. Don't close with a final uh, backslash and then go ahead and close. So PCU source that's my uh, that's where I've extracted these from step number three. Okay. So I just add that and I close it and save it. And I do that for all three architectures. Not in the SP1 folder, okay, but in the actual root folder. So same thing. So I just copy and paste. Okay. Go to each one of them. And that's it really. Now I am uh, I'm ready to launch my setup and it will go through and I'll show you where you can actually see evidence of this. Unfortunately, it doesn't 
show it doesn't like change an image or anything to say SQL Server 2008 R1 um, it doesn't like my product key right <laughs> so what I can what I have to do in that case is go down uh, to my default setup I and I and just remove it okay. and once I do that it picks it up from my architecture and we're able to see it now I have a document while this is going through that's attached with this video it's called overview.txt and this is the six steps that's required so let's let's go through can't tell at this point that we're slipstreaming I'm gonna hit the setup button I'll come back to uh, the slipstreaming overview here uh, there so step number one copy your DVD to a folder download your service packs extract your service packs or your CU's so cumulative updates okay to a folder I went ahead and named it SP1 so we could have something to talk about okay replace your original setup file update the RTM files using the robocopy file that I've attached and change that default setup.ini okay uh, and uh, let's come down here keep going next make your choices whatever again you don't see it didn't install my product key so make your choices choose what you want we'll just say I want to do that and now under the installation rules we'll actually be able to see whether or not we did it correctly okay so coming down here look at right here this is right there update setup media language compatibility okay it passed so then we're okay Right? If we have a failure, if we didn't do step five or six correctly, we will not pass through this point. So we'll just do something junky. I mean, I'm not, I don't really care about this. I'm not going to install it uh, and or I'm not going to keep it around rather. So we'll, uh, I have already the SQL agent and I have the SQL server from the previous uh, here. and blah 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 add current user windows fine um, go through here let it go through and do the installation when we're finally finished here we'll see the summary but look right here look at that there's your slipstream evidence okay. and in the summary it will also do that I'm not going to go through and do it I don't need it I just wanted to show you how to do this uh, I want to if you get stuck okay Here's a great link that walks you through the exact same steps that I did this from. So there's no ambiguity. You won't have any trouble with it. Works great. Takes you probably all of 10 minutes to do it all.